No, who came here to see Fred? Um, my name's Andrea Grimes, um, and I'm going to tell you some jokes. You don't have to listen, but it helps because they're funnier if you do. Um, I am so freaking jealous of Fred because on my 16th birthday, I think that. Um, I convinced my dad to load up like seven of my friends in his Suburban and we drove to the Planet Hollywood that was in the West End and had really horrible hamburgers and barbecue pizza, which I remember, and then we drove home again. My dad wouldn't let us like get out of the car, basically dropped us off in front of the Planet Hollywood, shoved us in the door and then picked us up afterwards. So Fred's pretty awesome. You know, on a scale of one awesome, Fred is closer to awesome. I had all these jokes about Fred's girly long hair, and then when I got here, he had my hair cut. <laughs> so thanks, Fred, you're a jerk. That's, that's cool. Appreciate it. Fred, Fred is, is uh, 16 going on rock star. So, couldn't be more proud of him. He's going to college, guys. He's not even going to high school in the fall. He's going to college in like two weeks. You're going to be a celebrity, Fred. You are a celebrity, Fred. That's cool. Oh, man. Well, thanks for coming out, guys. I really appreciate it. Like I said, um, Fred has my haircut now, which is cool. Um, my haircut is actually a challenge for me um, as a straight woman, you know, um, because as a good, you know, educated white liberal, I've got, like, my token black friend that comes in my life, and there's, like, an episode about racism or injustice or whatever. And um, she comes up to me and she saw my new haircut. And she's like, Andrea, that's really cute, but uh, it's a little short there. You be going gay for us? You gonna be doing all the licky licky on the girly girlies? <laughs> I was like, no, no, just because I have short hair, that doesn't mean that I'm gay. Uh, you're black, does that mean you're gonna be doing a little shooty shooty on whitey whitey? <laughs> she didn't think it was funny. But I guess she got over it, because we totally ended up making out later. <laughs> Um, no, I am straight and uh, I'm single. I very recently broke up with my boyfriend. No, um, let me tell you about it. Um, he was one of these guys, he seems like he's a really smart, kind of intellectual guy, and then it turns out he's just a twat. Um, he uh, had a really nice bookshelf, you know, like it seemed like he read a lot of really good books. His opinion of good bathroom reading was E.E. E. Cummings. I'm like, dude, how hard do you want to make taking a shit? You know? Put some Where's Waldo in there. Stripes, not punctuation. Nobody reads the e-comics. Alright. I'm sorry. That's That's cool. Um, no, I was, uh, my friends, of course, after the breakup, were trying to make me feel, you know, better, so they brought me this giant gallon tub of, like, bluebell cookies and cream ice cream to work to make me feel better. And I was like, that's sweet, you know. I was just going to egg his car, but this will probably break the windshield. <laughs> it didn't. That was an awkward 3 a.m. conversation. <laughs> Banging a gallon of blue bell against the windshield with a sob. <laughs> Harder than you might think. A little slightly delicious. Melts fast in the summer heat, though. So if you're going to beat somebody's windshield, try to do it in the winter time. Um, I was, I, for a while, though, I was really upset about this breakup, so I, I had to go through my whole house and I threw away everything this guy had given me, you know, pictures and all that stuff, because I didn't want to have anything in my house to, to remind me of him. It's like I used to freak out if there was like a roach in the closet, but now I freak out if there's like a man's sock on the floor. You know, like I just want to call up Terminex and be like, hey, can you guys come spray my house for philandering jerks who are eat, eat coming on the toilet? <laughs> And one time I actually found my ex-boyfriend in the closet, which was weird, because um, I could have sworn I put his body in the trunk. <laughs> starting to leave things places. Um, and of course, in this, in this virtual world we live in now, you can't just change your real self when you dump somebody. you got to change your virtual self, your online self. So I had to change my MySpace profile from in a relationship to single, because uh, I needed one more thing to mount to uh, make me feel bad about being single. Thanks, Tom. You're a dick. Um, 
but uh, I got me to thinking like in a relationship and single, those are our two choices according to my space. It's all you can be, you know? It's like, I just want to set that thing on oscillate. You know? Single, sex, crying, relationship, crying, sex, single. Somewhere between sex and crying. Um, the thing about being single, though, it's all right, except for I'm broke. Um, which means that not only, you know, do I not have any money, um, but I, ha I still have my daily reminder that I'm not getting laid because I keep taking my birth control pills. Um, but I'm so broke, I have to take the generic pills. You know? Which makes me think, you know, after I've been taking these things for years, when I finally do get pregnant, I'm going to have the most unexceptional child ever. <laughs> He's just, he's gonna have a slightly different taste, texture, and smell from other children. I really like RC Cola. In the delivery room, the doctor is just gonna be like, Congratulations, it's a sea stew. I have play dates with my friends. They're gonna be like, Little Timmy's already on a third grade reading level. I'm like, Fuck you, ortho tricycling. $50 a month for that crap. <laughs> oh man, no, I'm single though. I do, I do all kinds of stuff alone now. Um, I eat alone, but I don't like to cook. So I get those uh, frozen pasta dinners in a bag. You know, it's got the, the frozen cubes of uh, pasta and the little frozen cubes of trans fat. And you just put that stuff on the stove for like 10 minutes, medium heat, and it's done. Which is really easy to remember because that's how all my relationships go. <laughs> But uh, you, do, you have to spice it up a little bit, you know. So I was, uh, I go to the grocery store and I'm in the freezer section looking at all the different varieties and all the like hot SMU kids are walking by and having sex in the dairy section. And um, I'm trying to decide between linguine and penne. And I, I took the bag out. For the first time I looked at the label on the bag. It says Bertoli Italian Frozen Dinners for Two. I can kill one of those in 14 minutes with a good time. That's not so bad, you know. You got your, your little pasta bowl and um, like maybe a can of highlight. And um, Friday night on the couch, cat watching the BBC. So it's all right. And why don't they just put a green label on the bag? Dear Bertoli Italian dinner for two for one eater. Repeated consumption of Bertoli Italian dinner for two for one will result in you having a very intimate relationship with your cat when you're 50. Eat up. So I decided, screw you, Bertoli. I'm gonna eat half the bag. I'm gonna eat half the bag and half the bag and half the bag until I find somebody that wants to eat the other half of the bag with me. You know? And I think if I keep eating half the bag, I will find someone. I think he'll be like a doctor. Uh, maybe an endocrinologist. And I think he's going to say three really sweet words to me. You have diabetes. 